Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular deals. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. £500. No. Tempting, but not tempting enough. That's a good bid. If I don't think that's enough money, the offer, I'm going to say, refuse that, live dangerously, have a gamble, go to auction. We might just get you a few more quid there. All done then, Sally. Today the show comes to you from Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. Just look at this crowd. They've been here since early this morning. They're determined to walk away with cash in their pocket or gamble at auction. But either way, you know what they want. They want the real deal. First up today, Dean's hoping his early birds are going to catch the worm. Uh, brought in a bird cage, wind up uh, bird cage automaton. Uh, I'm hoping to get well, three, three hundred fifty pounds for it. That musical bird cage is coming home with me, come hell or high water. But will Alison Chapman sing to Dean's tune? Beautiful little bird cage, isn't it? Beautiful. A little piece of automata, yep. a little gem. Um, how did you come by it? It was my parents. Um, my father died recently and um, just cleaned the ass out. So. Was it a piece he enjoyed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like, when the grandkids came and that kind of thing used to wind it up. Well, shall we see if they're singing? Yeah, they definitely sing and move. So he'll go through a whole song first and then the yeah, yellow one will just take up. Just alternate, yeah. Cool, well, it's delightful. So you're not tempted to keep it? Mm, not particularly, no. No, we just thought it would come on today and thought we'd put it in. OK, well, I actually have the original version of this. It's a single bird in its cage, stands much bigger. Yeah. And I keep it in my shop and children love it. Mm. So I'd like to add that to my growing collection. So there's a hundred pounds. Right. And there is two hundred pounds. Two hundred and fifty pounds. I think we're getting there. You would get there a lot more quickly to a figure that you might have in mind if I was totally convinced that this was older than round about 1970. Yeah. My opinion is that it's about that sort of age, 1970s, and it would have originated from Italy. They used to make them out there, and they brought them in in their hundreds. But um, my offer's 250. Right, can you not go a bit more? What sort of figure did you have in mind? Uh, at least another one of them, I was thinking a little bit more. You're at 300. Uh, I think I'd like it a bit more than that. Hark, what is this? It's Tweet Tweet Man. It's Birdman. Has she told you it's a repro? She believes it's a repro, doesn't she? Well, I've been in this business about 30 years, and I can tell you, if that was 1890 to 1900, we would be looking at 1800 quid's worth. We're not looking at something quite as early as that. It's still a desirable object. I'm going to say there's somewhere around three to four hundred quids within the auction. So I don't think that's enough. And if I was you, I think we will fly off to the auction where we will prove Alison wrong. So that's what I would do. I do not see it at three to four hundred, despite what the independent valuers say. So what I am going to do is make it a little bit more harder for you by offering you 275. Can you get a little bit close to that, far, to that 300 figure? How can, close? Can you, well, as close as you can, 300 preferably. I was hoping 300 I've had pounds. quite enough of your help, thank you very much. His whistling, his whistling is getting better. <laughs> Only 275? Yeah. Off to the auction. No, but David, come back. If he got 325 at auction, I mean, you're saying it, you reckon it at 360, well, I, that is a, a very respectable I mean, offer. I mean, it is a respectable offer. I mean, I think if I was you, girl, I'd get that 25 quid in there so fast that it would stop this little bird. 
<laughs> he would stop this little bird from singing, and yeah. I would say 300 probably isn't worth the gamble. Fly away home, little bird. You, you know win, what she's like. I give in. So, 300 okay. pounds, Dean. Do we have a deal? We have a deal. She'll have it sold for 850 by Monday. <laughs> Uh, I think it was a fair deal. Uh, I'm quite sure that Alison is telling the truth and that she genuinely believes that it is from the 60s. We've always been led to believe that it's older than that, but she is the expert. I know she has quite a lot of interest in them. And, uh, and to be honest, I'm quite happy at that. Am I happy? I'm ecstatic. I think he's had a fair price for it. It's something I'd have liked to have brought at 225, but they both work, so I am delighted with it. Will Alison keep the birds or sell them on? Find out later. Next up, is Helen Gardner going to be blown away by this century-old book? The next item looks like some kind of technical manual, which I know nothing whatsoever about, but we'll have a go. I'll find out as we go along. Well, this is a little engineer's manual. What can you tell me about this book? Um, what I've been told is my great-grandma passed it down to my mother, and yeah. my mother's gave it me, and I brought it along today to... To see what it's worth? Yep. Well, it's quite interesting being a stoker's manual, so it would have been from a steamboat, yep. and it's about the time of the Titanic, isn't it? Correct. It's quite an interesting little book, and I think it would be described as a boy's toy. But let me have just a little look at it. So inside we have... A picture? You know anything about this picture? Nothing whatsoever. It looks that looks a little bit later to me. That looks like 1930s, 1940s. Possibly. So I think this picture is later than the book. And this Stoker's manual, it's been well used. Somebody's been training well with this. <laughs> and it's got all the diagrams of engines, furnaces, and then there's some there's writing some... at the back, isn't there? Yeah, some handwriting at the back. So somebody's been doing their calculations. As I say, it's evocative of a bygone age. I have no idea what it's worth. I'm just going to put a little bit of money on the table. It won't be a lot. How about £20 for your book? Not at all? No. Well, Nick, there's £25, and I don't think I'm going to be going any further on that. Here's David. Now, you never know. <laughs> this might come in handy <laughs> if you want to learn to be a stoker. I'll tell you what the independent valuers say. It's an odd item to value. They say somewhere between 30 and £60. Pounds. I'm looking at that and thinking, if you go to the auction, what will you get? Will you get 40 or 50 or will you not? I really don't know. No, it's a difficult it's, one. It's a difficult one. It's a tricky one. You can gamble at auction, but if it was me... I'd have the 25 quid and I'd be down the pub for a wee talk. <laughs> David's advice, as always, yep. hits the nail. So that's as far as I'm going to go. I think I've made a generous offer, but the auctioneers are saying something different. I don't know who's right. You have to decide that. I'm not going to squeeze any more. I'm not going to go for another penny. <laughs> that's the maximum bid I'm putting on the table. I think we'll take it to auction. Then. Going to gamble. Well, for £25, it's worth a gamble. Yes. I hope it does really well for you. Thank you Thank very, you very much, much, Nick. Thank you very much. Cheers. Quirky item. I'm going to take it to auction. I think it's worth a little bit more. Um, I didn't take David's advice. He said probably 25 was about right. But it's a day out. We'll see how it goes. But before we head to the sale room, let's hear what auctioneer Stephen Iredale thinks. Goodness knows what that'll make. £25, you've got to try, try and beat £25. I'm, I'm up for having a go, but uh, I'll be as interested as you to know what it makes. So, David thinks Nick should have accepted Helen's offer, Nick's up for a gamble and the auctioneer's not sure. Time to find out who's right. Sally, you're big, sir. Now, you sat down with Helen Gardner and Helen said 25 quid. Were you under instructions from home to take a certain price or...? Strict instructions from my mother. Say no more. He's under strict instructions from his mother that 25 quid was not good enough. Now, here in the sale room, we've got a 30 to 40 pound estimate, and there is as a reserve of 30. There is still commission to take off that, so does she know that? Yeah. I mean, will you be able to get back in the house? Am I sending you home? You'll be able to get in with you. I'm hoping I've got enough diesel money. <laughs> 
Don't bet on it, I'll tell you. <laughs> Let's see what happens. It's coming up now. There we are. Published in London, 1912. 30 pounds do I see? 30 pounds? <clears throat> 30 pounds bid. How's it gone, Cersei? At 30 pounds and five now. At 30 pounds and five do I see? At 30 pounds. Five now, 35. 35 Surprise. 35 new plates. Oh, 35. At 35 pounds I'm bid and 40 do I see? At 35 pounds, all done then. At 35. That's somewhere near to 29 pounds. You turned down 25 pounds on instruction from your mum. And this time you got £35, take away the commission. You're going home with a real deal of £29. Are you happy? Very happy. The most important question is, will Mum be happy? I'd imagine. What's Mum called? Sue. Sue? Let him in. <laughs> He's a good lad. Let him back in. He's got £29 in his hand. That is the real deal. Oh, phew, a few quid more than Helen's offer, and hopefully Mum Sue's smiling too. Oh, Next up, April's waiting to meet Joe Brayshaw. How are you feeling, April? I am nervous, being here, excited, apprehensive about what Joe thinks to my bow It's quite pretty and it's clean looking. I haven't investigated yet, um, but it's nothing to set the world alight. Don't worry too much, April. Joe <laughs> might be tough, but she doesn't actually bite. How do you have a Moorcroft bull? It was passed on from an auntie of mine to me, which I then passed on to my mum and dad. So we've had it 30 plus years. So it's not really yours, it's your mum and dad's? It's my dad's. <laughs> so, so I've come along to sell it for him. Right. Hopefully. It's more cross. It's got, it's nice because it's got its original paper yeah. label on the base, which is always nice. Potters to the late Queen Mary. I'm guessing it's what, about 1910, something like that? Do we know? Do you, have you dated it? I haven't personally, no. No. It's green going into this rich blue on this little butt. It's in good nick, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's not had any restoration, has it? How much do you want for it? I always Give try. Me for it. I always try. Give me One day, for it. someone's going to say, £50. A bit more, please. A bit more, please. Have one of those Oliver moments. £60. Dad won't be happy at that. No, but I would. <laughs> at least one of us will be happy. Um, £60. Realistically, realistically, help me out, cos I don't know... Up to 150 About 150 Yeah. I'm a million miles off, aren't I? You are. I am, aren't I? See, I don't get Moorcroft. Why is that worth 150 Um, 20 140 now, I'll leave it up to you, April. You can either take the money or bolt to auction. Can't you put another ten on, please? Um, I don't really want to. But the option's yours. You don't have to take my 140. But I'm sticking with my 140. I'll deal. Dealing? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the deal. Thanks You're for welcome. the fun. It looks all the money, doesn't it? See, see what I sell it for, but it looks all the money to me. It was a difficult decision, but I decided to take the money because my dad, watching the TV, he'd say, deal. Coming up. yo ho, ho and a barrel of rum. Shiver me timbers, David, what's going on? <laughs> Had you been on the grog then, Dick? You always bring that up, don't you? <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Mansfield. Let's set sail for David Ford's table, where Alison's brought in a fascinating copper collection. I brought some Navy rum measures that were my husband's. He had them uh, on board ship in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully getting a good amount of money for them. Nice collection of eight measures, all naval, and with my own naval connection, I really hope to buy them. David and auctioneer Stephen Iredale are up on deck to make sure this deal goes smoothly. They know that items like these are right up David Ford Street. What an interesting collection. And you seem to have them from every size up to big. Yes, my husband got them when he was in the Navy uh, right. in the 60s. Uh, and he brought them home and his mother had them uh, until she died. And then we've had them for about four years up in our attic. 
Now, what do you think they were for? Well, I was left to believe that they're rum tarts because we've put us rum in those days. And, and these are measured were. in this pint um, yeah. quart. The thing is that they date some are sort of 50s and some yeah. are a bit older. Right. Uh, that none of them are very old. But they're, they're nice because you've got, got all the sizes going down to quite tiny. I think they're wonderful. Stephen, we've got a set of measures here. Reportedly, they are Navy measures. Now, obviously, some of them might be for your grog, for your yeah. allocation of grog, but some of them seem to be that they were perhaps for some kind of grain, maybe rice or flour or something like that. 20th century, perhaps 1950s, and one or two earlier ones. A couple of Victorian ones, yeah. I'm inclined to agree that that large one must be for, for grain or something. I certainly wouldn't want to climb up the rigging after I'd drunk that. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to place your valuation, your estimation on this, Stephen? As we've said, they are a composite set. Right. So I've been a little bit conservative and said two to three hundred pounds, but I would hope for the top end of that and maybe a couple of bids more. OK. Well, you've heard what Stephen says, and I, I feel exactly the same way. Let's see what our young sailor boy, David Ford, puts on the table. I think he's going to like this. So, money. Yes, please. Let's see whether I can buy them from you. I'll get a bit of money out. 50, 100, 150 pounds, 200 pounds for your measures. No, a little bit more. More? Yes, please. Yes, please. 220 pounds. Yo ho ho and a barrel of rum. Now it just happens that we've come to the right table with the right expert because young David was a boy seaman <laughs> and probably remembers these from 50 or 60 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, Dave was in the Navy as a young man, uh, so he probably will have seen these measures. Well, that would have been as they called it, neaters, neat rum, which would have gone to uh, petty officers and above, chief petty officers. And then for the ranks below that, they would have filled that with water, which would have been double the quantity, and that would have been a measure of grog. So as a young lad sailing off in the Navy, yes. uh, what kind of measure did you get as a young chap? Did? I would have got, well, not until you're 18, you didn't get rum, and I would have had grog, which was two to one water and rum. And you have one of those, and if you'd done somebody a few favours, you could end up having two of those, and you were useless, really, to do any work. <laughs> is, that, is that the time you got left behind in the West <laughs> Indies? Had you, had you been on the grog then, Dave? You always bring that up, <laughs> don't you? OK, <laughs> let me tell you what the independent valuers say. They say two to three hundred. Oh. You've got two hundred and... Is it twenty? OK. Not a bad offer. I think they're worth a bit more. So if you can't persuade David to put a little bit more on, then I would say to you, have a gambling auction. They are visually good enough to sell for someone for interior decoration use. Well, well as always, useful, useful, constructive advice. Yeah. A little bit more? I do quite like them. Okay. 240. £250. Just wait to swap that for a purple one and then we'll have a deal. Or oh, 260 Yes, I think they're nice. I will. Okay. Look at that. And you're going to shake my hand? Yes, I am for that. Alison, Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Thank very, you very much, much. indeed. Thank you. Back in the den with Alison, will she give this next item the time of day? I brought in my Great Aunt Mary's Old Gold's Watch. But the last time I wore it properly was when I went to a dance at Art College in Edinburgh about 50 years ago, and unfortunately it got stewed on and broken. These watches are so expensive to repair, so I just thought scrap. But there might be more to this watch than meets the eye. So we do have 
a pleasing nine carat gold watch, but it's poorly. It is, and sadly, yes, I danced on it. You danced on it? I so danced on it and I had it repaired afterwards. I'm right. talking just about 50 years ago. This belonged to my great aunt. Right. And I had it repaired and then unfortunately it went again. The thing is, it costs so much money now to repair these watches. And unless it's of a, a movement of any note, then it really is not worth doing. And I think, sadly, this, in my opinion, falls into that category. So it would be the happy to buy it, yeah. I would be buying it for its gold content. Yes, yeah. if that's what has to happen to it, that's what has to happen to it. So the watch in its time, yeah. you know, you would have been quite a well-to-do lady to own a watch like this. So your aunt would have had money. Yes. And she did have money. She did. So she was a spinster, so she had a lot of money. She, she did, yeah. did she? Yes. And where did money come from? Linen. They yes. had a linen mill in Kirkcaldy. You in were five. mill owners. Yes, we were. <laughs> oh, my word. So you were the rich people of your day. They were. Well, yes, your family. They were, We've got yes. that connection. In fact, let me have a look. No, Why, that red that's... blood has turned to blue on that money. <laughs> blue blood at my table. How exciting yes. for you. What a history. I don't know what to do about the watch now. I was actually I'm... just discarding it in my mind's eye. But now I feel I want to do more than just that. So actually I might, I might get it repaired. You might not often get a dealer say this to you, but I actually haven't looked at this carefully enough. I've picked it up, I've looked at the face, no mark to the face. After listening to the story of Aunt Mary and her riches, I've opened the back and do you know what this is? It's a lady's Rolex. Yes. Yeah. But you didn't tell me that. You never asked me. Well, <laughs> no, well I should have done my own work, shouldn't I? Right. We're not going to be able to scrap that. Right. We're going to have to fix that. Oh, well, that's nice. That's nice. And that's of nice. course, it puts an entirely different price on it. That one word, Rolex, even in this condition, makes that watch worth to me. Not fifty pounds. No. Not a hundred pounds. Right. To me, even though it's not working, and I'm yeah. going to have to pay about a hundred pounds to get it fixed. Yes. Yes. It makes it worth a hundred and seventy-five pounds. Right. You couldn't just squeeze another fiver and change that blue one for a brown one, and then I'd, and I'd go away a happy lady, and Aunt Mary would be. My advice, because I feel that to be a very good offer, okay. in the words of David Dickinson, get you that know. money in your pocket, All girl. All right then. All right then. I, I will. You That's sure? Yes, I'm sure. Sure, Mary? Yes. We got a deal. Yes. Thank, thank you very you. much, my love. <laughs> and thank you, Aunt Mary. <laughs> so that was lovely. It was very unexpected, very nice, and I didn't have to haggle, did I? No haggling. I was, I was ready for the haggling bit, but it didn't come. <laughs> she sold me that watch on its history. I loved the history. And I should relay that to the person that buys it off me. Well done, Fiona. We'll find out later in the show if the watch's story can make Alison a profit. Still to come, has Dr Dickinson got the remedy? I can make the pain quick <laughs> and get it over with, yeah. or I can drag it out. Will Helen's offer sugar the pill? 180, 200 pounds. Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The team are in Mansfield in Nottinghamshire today, and as the antiques and collectibles drop in, Joanne and Keris are looking to score with this car mascot. It's Keris's um, granddad's. So where's granddad? That and we wanted us to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> and so why is um, Grandad getting rid of it? He don't know where to put it no more. He doesn't have a car for it to go on? No. And is he a football fan? He used to be. <laughs> right, we'll have a little shufty. Do we know what sort of car it came off or is it just a generic car mascot? I didn't even know from a car. It's chrome. Looks kind of 1930s 
1840s, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you know how long Grandad's had it? He's had it for 40 years. He's had it for 40 years. How much is it worth? How much is it? Not going to get a clue? Yeah. No. <laughs> Let's rock and roll it. Start with £100. No. No? Twenty. No. You see, I'm not that bothered about owning a car mascot that's in the shape of a footballer. So, um, maybe you should get a bit of advice off David, because uh, I don't know. Here he comes. Well, it is a mascot. It is a car mascot. I particularly like that it is a football. Two to three hundred pounds is the estimation. If you can get somewhere near that from an, a Newcastle United fan, who's pretending she doesn't know who the team is. <laughs> OK, it's a good object and I think it's very commercial. So you've heard the advice? Mm -hmm. Got change it to auction. Auction? Sure. Have a good day, you make lots of money. Thanks for bringing it in. I'm happy to be proved wrong, but it looked like £120 worth. Unusual, and it appeals to more than one group of people, which is why I think it's so good. Um, so you've got collectors of car mascots and collectors of football-related things will all be interested in it, um, and I'm hoping it should do quite well. Nifty footwork, Stephen. Good to get an expert opinion. Let's see how David tackles this one in the sale room. Joanne and Keris brought along a car mascot. It was a footballer. They sat down with Joe Brayshaw. I thought, Joe's going to buy this. You know, from Newcastle, why, hey, man, the Toon Army. She offered 120 quid. They said, no, we're going to go to auction. They can't attend today, so I'm looking after their interest. £250 is the reserve on this. Are they being a little bit ambitious? Well, let's find out. I've got three bids, almost identical. It starts at £210. Sounding good. Three bids on the book. Starts at £210. At £210. 20 do I see. At £210. All done then. At £210. Can't quite sell that. So near, so far. And so the gavel has gone down. It didn't make the £250. It got up to £210. It was so, so close. You win some, you lose some. Next up, Jane is hoping her silver ingots dazzle Helen. I have a rough idea how much they're valued at. Hopefully I can walk away with a little bit more than what I think they are. I'm sure they're interesting to somebody, but maybe as a scrap silver, I might be interested. Now you tell me all about these, please. Well, my grandfather bought them for me. Uh, there's 25 altogether. Lucky you. I know. Um, they've been in the loft collecting dust and I just think it's time to sell them. I see. Um, How long ago was that when your grandfather bought you them? I can't remember. I was only probably in my twenties when he gave them to me. So it's a few years ago. Probably a few years yeah, ago. A few years ago. <laughs> oh, was this to commemorate the Queen's Silver Jubilee? Yes, it is. Yes. There's one for every year. There's 25 altogether. So they're all beautifully done and according to your certificate, there was only 5,000 of these made worldwide. Yes. Well, the quality is fantastic. Yes. Lovely pictures of Her Majesty. <laughs> I could appreciate the quality and the workmanship here, mm -hmm. but I would only put down scraps. To me, it's scrap silver. I have no interest at all right. in looking at it from a commemorative point of view. Right. So I'm being perfectly honest with you. Right. But you have to decide, is my money on the table, which is going to be reflecting the scrap value right what you would take or do you think that going to auction you might get someone who's more who's interested, interested in, in the royalty yeah. exactly let's put some money on the table right there's 20 40 60 80 100 120 140 160 180 200 pounds how do you feel about that I do think it might be worth a little bit more, maybe. OK, look, there's two, 20, 240 pounds. Now that's, I think, me getting to where I want to be. I can make the pain quick <laughs> <laughs> and get it over with, yeah. or I can drag it out. Which would you prefer? Um, 
we'll, uh, we'll draw, <laughs> I don't know. Right. These limited editions were sold with great expectation by well-known companies through newspapers, magazines and so forth. Sadly, in my opinion, they have not lived up to the pledges or expectations that they were supposed to achieve. The right. one good thing is the price of the base metal has risen yeah. dramatically. There is £289 worth of scrap value here. I'm going to say get the 240 quid. Right, OK. And that's the only advice I can give. OK, thank you, David. There's the money on the table. It's up to you, my dear. It's a deal, Anna. Thank you very Thank much. You. What are you going to do with the money? I'm going to treat myself to a new laptop. Oh, well done. That'll be good. There's 240 on the table. I decided to take the money and not bother going to auction because at the end of the day there's commission to be taken off, so I think I've got a fair deal. Well, I've bought the silver ingots at just under scrap price, so unfortunately they probably will be scrapped. We understand, Helen. Business is business. Coming up... All right, Wendy, get the money out, David, and start talking turkey. <laughs> but David's about to have his feathers ruffled. That's tempting, isn't it? Tempting, but not tempting enough. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's almost the end of a busy day in Mansfield, but we still have time for a treasure from the Far East. Bought in a, a dragon ring, bought it in Thailand about nine years ago, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting a good deal. Hopefully we can get a few hundred pounds for yeah, it. Yeah, that'd be lovely. But will it burn a hole in David's pocket? Well, hello, ladies. Hayley, Wendy, it is. I'm David. Very bright and shiny ring you have here. So tell me about it. Where did you buy it? Bought it in Thailand about nine years ago. And was that uh, just a weak moment, or did you fall in love with it? Or? Yeah, um, I don't normally go for anything blingy like that, but I just saw it, it caught my eye, thought it was unusual, and when I tried it on, it fit me, so I thought it's meant to be mine. But it's unusual, isn't it? Because I noticed um, if I slip it on my little finger, it, 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 the head sort of wobbles. Yeah, articulated. That's the word, articulated. So why have you decided now to sell it? Well, because I only wear it on special occasions, obviously, and, and Hayley doesn't want it, so... You don't like it, She Hayley? won't wear it's it. Too for me. <laughs> Not your cup of tea? No. You can't see wearing that when you go out... <laughs> Party and <laughs> that. No? <laughs> OK. Right, so I think it was probably made in Thailand. I think it was, yeah, and, yeah, so, and it was probably new when you bought it. So it's not not old. Always the problem with foreign gold is we don't know. I mean, it's bound to be gold, but we've no idea what carat it is. But it's got lots of little rubies in it, which look quite nice stones. Yeah, there's 55 of those. And it's got some little diamonds. I just wonder whether it's everybody's cup of tea. But I think it's beautifully made. All right, Wendy, get the money out, David, and start talking turkey. <laughs> or dragon, as it is in this case. Um, I'm being serious. £200. 250 £300. Getting excited. Going. 350 not You're not getting excited? Not yet, no. Wendy, there's £400. I think it's worth more than that. Do you? Mm -hmm. <sighs> you can keep going with that colour. That's a nice colour. You like that colour? <laughs> My favourite colour, red. Well, I'll give you another one of those, then. It's £450. No, I think it's still worth more than that, don't you? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, Wendy's sure. That's a good, good offer. No, 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 tempting, but not tempting enough. 450. 470. No. Are you still saying no? No. It's not really a round figure, is no. it? No. You like round figures? Yeah. <laughs> I think a little input from Mr. Dickinson might be constructive. Do you think so? Yeah. And here he is. I was going to say, speak of the devil, but I. <gasps> he likes a bit of bling, you know. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> now that. You know, I know it's Thai, but it's got a bit of style about it. 
It may be a little bit over the top, but the right person wearing that, it's a stunning item. The independent value was, say, 500 to 700, and I think they are right. If that went to auction on a good day, someone could fall in love with that. Now, there's no guarantee they will be there at the auction, but that could be worth a gamble, unless David gets more money. But David Ford knows these things. He knows what's commercial and what's good. He's breathing deeply now, but believe you me, he is one of the most knowledgeable dealers on Dickinson's real deal. Oh, there's a compliment. How about that? How about that? And I've got 400, so I've, I'm not going to lose face on the strength of that, am I? I'll take the 20 pound note away. 500 pounds. Keep going. It's all right. <laughs> we don't I've, mind. I've got to find another Wendy. That's my trouble. <laughs> I'm not sure there are a lot of them about. I think you're unique, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll have a real serious go. 550 pounds. That's serious. That's a good bid. Not really. He's coming back, you know. <laughs> well, I'm sure it is a tempting offer, mm. and it's a sound offer. The question is, what is it really worth? I mean, mm. I think it's got to be worth £600. Yes. Now, if you got £600, which is another 50 quid from David, it would be the equivalent of about £700 in the auction. It might look flashy, it might look over the top, but on the right lady, it could be stunning. He likes it, doesn't he? So... Smile, sweetly. <laughs> You're doing good. <laughs> 600 pounds. Is that your final offer? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then it's a deal. Deal. Thank, Thank you, you, Wendy. Thank you very much, <laughs> Hayley. Thank you. Well supported there. You're very good at this. <laughs> so you've got this 600 pounds now. What's going to happen to that? Well, I've always wanted to go to Australia, so I think I'll put it towards going there. Towards going to Australia? You've never been? For a holiday, no. Neither have I. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I've contributed towards a wonderful once-in-a-lifetime yeah. trip. OK, thank How you exciting. very much. I think we've probably got as much as we're going to get out of him, don't you? Yeah. So... We're quite happy, aren't we? Yeah, I think we're happy. It turned out that the Dragon was only 14 karat gold, so not as valuable as David had banked on. But that didn't stop the girls flying off down under. But how did the rest of today's purchases do for our dealers? She'll have it sold for 8.50 by Monday. <laughs> oh, but she didn't. Alison loved it and the birds are still tweeting away in her shop. It's quite pretty and it's clean, but it's nothing to set the world alight. But it was on fire when a private buyer at a Cotswolds antique spare took it off Joe's hands. Well, not until you're 18, you didn't get rum, and I would have had grog. David should be able to afford enough for his own bottle of rum now that he's sold these naval measures to a private buyer. These things, I'm sure they're interesting to somebody. And indeed they were, Helen. The silver ingots were sold within the trade, making her a sparkling profit. These watches, so expensive to repair, so I just thought, scrap. But the surprise item of the day was the broken Rolex, which Alison bought for £175. After spending another £75 to have it repaired, she sold it, clocking up a great profit. Happy, Alison? <laughs> Wonderful. We've had a great day here in Mansfield. There's been lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you. <laughs>